Let's take a look at the area of squares and rectangles. What is the area of this figure? Okay, well we have a rectangle and we can see in the diagram we have a length of seven miles and a width of eight miles. And by the way, it doesn't matter which, kind, which side you call the length or the width, just pick one. Call one side the length and the other side length the width. For a rectangle, our area formula is that you multiply the length times the width. So for this one, okay, in place of my length, I'm going to put 7 miles. And in place of my width, I'm going to put 8 miles. So in this case, I'm going to say 7 times 8. And then I multiply that together to get the area of my figure. and that's going to give me 56. Now, notice the units. They already filled in the units for us are miles squared. That's because we're multiplying miles times miles. When you multiply miles times miles, your answer is going to be in miles squared. What is the area of this figure? Okay, well we have another rectangle, so we know our area formula is going to be length times width. And we're going to multiply the two side lengths together. Right, we have a length of 10 inches times a width of 9 inches. So when we multiply that together, 10 times 9, we're going to get 90 inches squared. What is the area of this figure? Okay, well we have another rectangle. Any rectangle, you can always use the same area formula. Multiply the length times the width. So we have a length of 5 miles and a width of 9 miles. Okay, well let's multiply 5 times 9, and that's going to give us 45. And miles times miles is miles squared. Okay, what is the area of this figure? And by the way, when we're talking about area of a rectangle, what are we really talking about? We're talking about all the space occupied by this figure. So all the space taken up inside, or that you see here in red. Okay, so our area formula length times width, we're going to call one side the length and the other side the width. So when we multiply that together, we're going to have 6 times 4, or 24 inches squared. What is the area of this figure? Well, this time, notice we have a square. How do I know this is a square? Well, the sides are both seven, right? So if this side length is seven inches, the side opposite is also seven inches. And if the bottom is seven inches, then the side opposite, the top, is also seven inches. So if all four sides are the same length and we have four 90 degree angles, then we have got a square. Now a square is a type of rectangle, so you could use the same formula if you want to. You can say area equals length times width. And in this case, the length and width would just both be the same, right? 7 times 7, and that's going to give us 
49. And of course, when we say inches times inches, our answer is going to be in inches squared. Now, sometimes you see a special formula for squares. Sometimes they say the area is equal to the side squared. But remember, squaring something means to multiply it by itself. So if I use this formula, I would say, okay, that would be 7 squared. And 7 squared means 7 times 7. So isn't this the exact same thing as what I put right here? So whether you use the area equals side squared formula for a square, or whether you use the regular formula for a rectangle, you're going to get the exact same answer. Either way, you're going to get an area of 49 inches squared. So it's just two ways to look at the same exact problem. Now, the nice thing about using the area equals side squared formula is that it just reminds you that 49 is a perfect square, meaning it's an answer we got when we said 7 times 7. What is the area of this figure? Okay, well we have another rectangle, so we know the area formula is going to be to multiply our side lengths, right, length times width. So if we call this length, and this width, we can then plug that into our formula to say 6 times 7. Okay, and 6 times 7 gives us 42. And of course, our answer was in, we had inches times inches, so our answer is in inches squared.